Right? It would be just that simple. Just do what you're supposed to do. So that's what the Most High God is trying to tell you. Like, man, you do what you're supposed to do. It'll be a blessing in this way. It'll be a blessing in that way. Everything will be all right. You just do what you're supposed to do. Now, if you don't, though, let's talk about it if you don't. All right, let's talk about it. It's uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 43. Let's see what the book talking about. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and uh -huh. thou shalt come down very low. That's right. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. Uh huh. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. Right? We talked about that. Right? How did Mexicans, how did Mexican come over here, and they got Robertos all across the darn country? We've been here for 400 years, and we ain't got no, no, no real, like, across national chains of businesses, but they do? That's crazy. Doesn't make sense. And we've been here, like, in America. I'm not talking about just, like, been here. We've been here, like, in what these people now call America. They got, they went to war with these people, got they butt kicked out, got they land, took over, got pushed out, fought their way to get back in, came here illegally, and still beat us out. How does that thing work? Right? You look at, you look at all these Arabs, right? They come fleeing their country. They leave in Tunisia. They leave in uh they leave in Iran. They live in Iraq. You know what I'm saying? They trying to get they trying to get out of their country. They leave in uh Afghanistan, Syria, all these places getting blown to smithereens. They come over here as refugees. Somehow, as soon as they get here, they own the darn corner stores in our neighborhoods. Own that thing too. How does that work? Right? You go to New York on the east side, they be talking about bodegas and all this different stuff. These, these Latin Americans, they don't own them things. How does that work? Meanwhile, you got us. We try to build us a little something. Guess what happened to it? Black Wall Street, that thing get taken down. Harlem Renaissance, that thing get taken down. Right? They built, they got a place, they got a place where our grave site is underneath buildings. You, they, say, they say right now, if you tear down some of them buildings in New York, you have black bodies built all, I mean, uh, buried all underneath it. Yeah, they starting to dig up stuff in Texas under these houses. Okay. Yeah! They found all them darn bodies in Texas. A big old gray field. Just bodies just thrown together. Any people want to talk to me about a holocaust? Please, get out of my darn face. Right? Let's talk about it. Most High God already told us. He said, this is what's going to happen if you don't obey my laws. My statutes, my commandment. He put them there for a reason. You thought the man was playing? Let's look at it. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee. How many other curses? Just a few of them? All these curses. Every one of these things. That's why we go down the list. As we go down the list, I tell you, that thing happened in the book or it happened in our history. That's it. it you can either read about it. All these things that we read, you can either read about it in the book or you can point that thing out in the American history or African history. Somewhere in history, that thing gonna happen though. Every one of them. He didn't say some of these gonna happen. He said all of them gonna happen to our people. Maybe not to one individual, but they're gonna happen somehow in some way to our people. Keep going. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee mm -hmm. and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Until you be what? Destroyed. Your butt gonna be destroyed. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he has commanded thee and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever they gonna be upon you for a what sign and a wonder what's a sign uh, like an identifier an indicator it's a signal yeah. it's an identifier he said they're gonna be upon you for a sign that means that when people look at you they gonna be able to identify you by what's on you by these curses. Notice what he said before that. He said, you are going to be destroyed. This stuff is going to follow after you until it destroys you. What does that mean? You're done. You're dead. That's how we lost our identity. The curses followed us until we were destroyed as a people. Now these people don't know who we are. Now we don't know who we are. Because we were destroyed as a people. 
Then we come here, and then that's why he follow it up, and he come back and he tell, you know what, the only way people going to be able to identify you, the curse is going to be on you. I'm going to take away your heritage. I'm going to take away the name. I'm going to take away the prestige. I'm going to take away your hearty looks. I'm going to take away everything. You know how people are going to identify you? Only by the book. Only by the curse. They're going to be up on you for a sign and a darn wonder. Keep going. Because thou serves not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Mm -hmm. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. Mm -hmm. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. That's right. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. That's good there. We got to back that thing up. Go ahead and read that thing again for me. A nation of fierce countenance. Go back. Uh, the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from afar, from the end of the earth, uh, as swift as the eagle flies. He said as swift as the what? Eagle flies. Mm. A lot of people look at that, they be like, oh, that's America. You know what I'm saying? They got the bald eagle. You know They be like, oh, that's America. You know, maybe. You know what I'm saying? Maybe. Keep going. He said as swift as the eagle flies. A nation whose tongue you He shall said, a nation not whose tongue you shall not understand. He said, this is going to be a nation whose tongue that you don't understand. This prophecy, right? It's God's word. You know you good Christians. Your God can't be no liar now. Let's break that thing down. He said, a nation from where? From far. I said, this nation got to come from far. From, from the end of the earth. From the end of the earth. As swift as the eagle flies. Okay. A nation whose tongue you shall not understand. And you're not going to understand this nation's tongue. So now, let's just look at historically, the, the generally accepted history. Who took over the Hebrews, the Jews, the, 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 the Israelites? Yeah, the Greeks got their butt. The Romans came and got their butt. They knew both of them languages. We know that, right? We, knew, we know that they knew both of them languages. Because our books are written in what? Greek, the New Testament. New Testament was written in Greek. So we know that they were familiar with those languages, right? When, when, uh, when uh, Pontius Pilate put Yahushua on the, on, the, on the cross, he wrote the king of the Jews in three different languages. What languages was those? That Latin, Hebrew, and... Latin, Hebrew, and Greek. And Greek yeah. Right? So we know that they were familiar with the Greeks. They were familiar with the Romans because the Romans spake Greek as well, right? They lived with the Romans. We know that, right? They lived with the Greeks. We knew this. All this stuff we know. So now tell me who came along and who took over the people whose tongue they didn't understand. Like who came? Like who can we point to in history that took the people and they didn't understand their tongue? If we line it up and we say, okay, the Germans, right? These Germans, the Ashkenazi Jews, and tried to say that they the real people, show me where they were taken by a person or by a group whose language they didn't understand. The Germans in invaded uh, 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 Israel? When? When did they invade Israel, take Israelites captive, and take them back to Germany? If that happened, if you can show me that in history, then they got a claim. Right? They got a claim to that, that one curse. I can't find that in history. You know what I, even if you ask them, like, mm, how did y'all end up in Germany? You know what they tell you? After the exile, we migrated to Germany. Right? We migrated up to Russia, they say, and then came down into Germany. And the people got mixed. That's what they tell you, out of their own mouth. So I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to figure that thing out. If that's what it is, then when did you guys ever get taken by a nation whose tongue you weren't familiar with? Never happened. You can't line up with this prophecy then. The curse can't be on you for a sign. Now you bring it to our people. You can see exactly where this thing happened. We ain't never seen, we've never heard of no American, I mean no, uh, none of these, uh, these uh, Western Europeans. We never heard of none of that stuff. Right? These people coming from the new world with ships, we've never heard of them. Matter of fact, they've never heard of us. They came down looking for us, and they're looking like, oh, get they butt then. The Moors had to point us out. Right? We wasn't familiar with their stuff. 
Right? They came swift as eagles. You know how quick they got all them people? You know what I mean? People, they moved. I read something talking about 40 million Hebrews got transferred. In just over like 100, 100 something years. That's swift. I mean, you moving people. That's a whole lot of darn people. A lot of them died too. That's a whole lot of darn people. Right? Swift as eagle. That's book. Right? Keep going. Let's see what else we're talking about. They ain't going to read you. They ain't going to teach you about this part of the book. These people ain't going to break it down. You know what I'm saying? You had, you had T.D. Jakes the other day. He tried, to, he tried to ease it on the people. That's what he tried to do. I appreciate him, though. He tried to ease it on the people. He tells the people. He said, I trade. He, he ain't did nothing but take. Went to Ancestry.com, gave him his DNA. That's all he had. They told him, you from Nigeria. He went. He did a little research. Nigeria. Who out in Nigeria? Oh, the Ebos. Oh, the Ebos call themselves Hebrews. They say they're the black Jews. So he tried to connect with that thing. He probably looked into it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate him for telling that at least that much. Telling people the whole truth. Right? They're not going to teach you the whole truth. They're not going to teach you the whole book. I hope they will. Right? I'll be Abby Cameron. I sit here and I talk about these, these crooked pastors, these lying pastors all day. But if T.D. Jakes tomorrow turn around and just start teaching people the whole truth, you think I'm going to be against the man? I'll go sit in the dark church if he's telling the truth. What I'm, what I'm going to be against the man just because he wasn't telling it at first? I care less about what you were doing at first. You turn and you do it today. You my man. Creflo Dollar turned around all the money he done stole, all the, all the little weird stuff he done did with members in his church. If he turn around tomorrow and start preaching the whole truth and nothing but it, I'll go sit in the darn chair. Where are you at, Atlanta? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I ain't going to Atlanta. But, you know what I'm saying? In theory, I'll go sit in the darn church. Joel Osteen, crooked darn Gentile butt. If he turned around and said, you know what? Hebrews are the Hebrew. You got to keep. Hey, listen. You got to keep what the Messiah say. And you'll do well to keep the law. He turned around. He just start preaching that book. What am I going to do? Nah, but mm, nah, he probably got something under his sleeve. If it's right, what do he got under his sleeve? When the last time you seen the devil tell somebody to do something right? And not compromise. I'm not about to see See, a lot of people look at it, look at it like we just against people. Who, no, we against people because it's wrong. We against people because they're not telling people the truth. It's frustrating to people to see because people had an idea like, you know, everybody can't be wrong. I never told you everybody was wrong. I told you the people that I'm talking about is wrong. <laughs> if I knew everybody, then I'd be able to have, you know what I'm saying, I'd be able to say with some confidence that everybody is wrong. I don't know everybody. I haven't met everybody. I haven't heard from everybody. Once I get there, I'll let you know if everybody's wrong or not. Until then, the people I'm talking to you about is wrong. Right? Let these people tell you the truth. Make them tell you the truth. Don't accept nothing other than that. You are a darn Hebrew. If you were descendant of the slaves, you were, you were Hebrew. You from the people of the Most High God. The people that the Most High God chose out. These people didn't lie to you. These people didn't told you nothing. They didn't told you you don't have no history. They told you you was a stinking African and you jumped around with paint all over your face and big old gauges in your darn lip. They told you you used to scratch yourself like a primitive animal. They told you you used to run around with monkeys. They told me you didn't know. You didn't know what you were doing. You lived in darn huts that you were dirty and pooping and eating poop. That's what these people would tell you. Now, true, there are Africans that are just like that. But that ain't you. You was a Hebrew. You was a clean people, even in Africa. You can pick up books. You can pick up books of slaves and their own testimony. And they'll tell you, back in my country, we were clean. We were well men and our women were decent. All this stuff we picked up, we picked it up from these people. Let these people tell you the truth. It's all in our book. It's our culture that we read. Keep going. We learn all this stuff, all this freaky deaky stuff from these people. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Uh-huh. Because thou serve not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. 
Therefore shall you serve your enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in one of all things. Tell me he ain't talking about our slaves. We, we got brought over to this country and shipped, and then they told us we had to work for them. He said in hunger. And in nakedness. In nakedness. And in thirst. And in thirst. And in one of all things. We wanted everything. It wasn't nothing we didn't. When they say one of all things, it's because we didn't have it. We didn't have anything. We had take it all. Like what you need. Keep going. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until mm -hmm. he have destroyed thee. When he say a yoke of iron, that just means bondage. Right? He said he's going to put the, the, the yoke of iron upon your neck until he destroy you. Keep going. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as uh -huh. swift as the eagle flies, a nation whose tongue you shall not understand. Mm -hmm. A nation of fierce countenance which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. Uh huh. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed. That's right. He said he's going to eat the fruit of our cattle and the fruit of our land until we be destroyed. So what people has their land taken over by another people while they are enslaved? Huh? Got to be us. We over here, we were slaves, we still being oppressed, and then you got Gentiles in our land calling themselves Jews. Right? Pretending as if they the descendants of the Hebrews. We the real descendants of the Hebrews. We got these white folks over in Israel right now calling themselves Jewish and all this stuff. Pretending like they us. And they eating the fruit of our land. Right? The benefits of our land, they get it. Tell me how this don't line up with us. Keep going. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee neither corn, wine, or oil, or increase of thy kind, or flocks of thy sheep, until he have destroyed thee. Mm -hmm. And he shall besiege Eli. thee in all thy gates until thy high and fence walls come down, wherein thou, wherein thou trusted. Right? This, this happened already. I think it's in the book of Kings. All right, keep going. Eli, Eli, get out. Get out. Get out. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thy kind, or flocks of thy sheep, until he have destroyed thee. Mm -hmm. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates until thy high and fenced walls come down, mm -hmm. wherein thou trustest throughout all thy land. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land, which the Lord thy God has given thee. Uh -huh. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord thy God has given thee in the siege, and in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee. Uh -huh. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother and toward his or toward the wife of his bosom, mm -hmm. and toward the remnant of his children, which shall he leave. All right? He said we gonna be oppressed and and put in the hunger so much that we turn against our own family, we turn against our own brother and our, our own wives. All right? Keep going. So that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat. Mm -hmm. Because he has nothing left him in the siege, mm -hmm. and in the straightness wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in all thy gates. Mm -hmm. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set sole of her foot upon the ground for her delicateness and tenderness, her eyes shall be evil toward her husband of her bosom, and toward her son, and toward her daughter, uh -huh. and toward her young one that comes out from between her feet, uh -huh. and toward her children which she shall bear. Mm -hmm. For she shall eat them for one of all things secretly in the siege and in straightness wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in thy gates. Mm -hmm. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of the law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear the glorious name, fear, glorious and fearful name, Yahuwah thy God, mm -hmm. then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed even great plagues, and of long, cont and, and of long continuance, and mm -hmm. sore sickness, and of long continuance. He said, you're going to be sick, and you're going to be sick for a long time if you don't obey this. Who the sickest people in America right now? Not just America, over the world. Us. That all that Ebola stuff. What do you think? What areas do you think is targeted? Where they exactly where the Hebrews are. Every darn outbreak. That thing coming back up. It just hit the news. 
Come back up, right where the darn Hebrews are in the Congo. Right? We look at it. In America, if you look at all the sicknesses, heart disease, darn, uh, uh, diabetes, you know what I'm saying? You look at all them things. Who the top of the list? African American. You don't see it every time on their stats. African American. We either going to be number one or we close. But I guarantee if you add up all the number ones, we got you beat. <laughs> right? Every single time. Why? It's law. Right? The most High God already told us. You think all this stuff is co coincidence? How? You tell me how it's going to be a coincidence that in every single error where we had an opportunity, we was running the show. We the, we the most popular celebrities. We make the most creative music. If you look up all these people inventions, we was the minds behind them. All these different things. Every Black History Month they try to tell y'all. You know what I'm saying? Oh, well, really, black people created this, but this person took the credit for it. They always, like, remind you of that. You tell me how our entire history here, we was the, we, I mean, we was the show. Our entire history here, we was the show. We built it all. And you mean to tell me we still at the bottom? You think that's a coincidence? How's the coincidence that we the sickest? How's the coincidence we had the most AIDS? How's the coincidence we had, like, no matter what category, if it's negative, how is it coincidence that we win it all when it comes to being negative? We got the roughest neighborhoods. We got the worst luck when it comes to housing. That's all a coincidence. Like, all this stuff is just a coincidence? No, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Right? I don't believe it. Keep going. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, mm -hmm. which thou was afraid of, mm -hmm. and they shall cleave unto you. Mm -hmm. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in this book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And ye shall be left few in number, whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the Lord, uh, obey the voice of the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, uh -huh. so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to nothing. Uh -huh. And you shall be plucked from off the land where you where you go to possess it. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. He going to scatter you where? Among all people. Ain't no escaping this. What you going to do? Where you going to go? If he's saying, I'm going to scatter you among all people, where you going to go to escape this curse? I'm going to leave America. I'm about to go to the Middle East. Okay, good luck. Good luck when you get there. I'm going to Europe. Good luck. I'm going to Russia. Good luck. Keep going. From the one end of the earth even unto the other. Every end of the earth, you getting it. From one end to the other, you darn getting it. Keep going. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, mm -hmm. even wood and stone. Even wood and stone. Now you got your Jesus piece. Right? Got your little fancy, you know what I'm saying, wood stained Jesus piece. That thing look good on your neck too. Sinner. Keep going. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. For the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, and failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind. Alright, he said, among these nations you shall have no ease. What does that mean? No rest. I mean, it feel like we never get a break, do it. Every time we turn on the TV. Something happened. Somebody getting gone. It's a it's a black celebrity that went broke, or it's a black a black uh, young boy getting shot, beat up by the police. You know what I'm saying? It never seemed like we get a break. Or in our personal life, we getting fired. You know what I'm saying? Something happened at our job. We getting laid off. We can't. We just can never get a break. We look around. It's our family members. They getting put out. They ain't got nowhere to stay. Ain't nothing going to happen. What we going to do? Right? It just look like we never darn get a break. He said, in this land, you will never have ease. Keep going. You won't have ease, what else? Or rest? But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. He said, a trembling heart. And what? Failing, Failing of eyes. And a what? And sorrow of mine. Mm. What do you think it means, sorrow of mine? Mm. 
Depression. 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 Why do you think all our people on drugs? We make the the sad thing is we make the drug cool for the rest of these people. We put it, we we ruining the rest of these people. We on drugs, the most high God gave us a star in mind. You think these people, if you took these drugs away, you think these people can live with themselves? I mean, they'd be forced to deal with some stuff. They sit here on drugs all day because they don't want to think about it. They don't want to deal with it. They just want to feel different because they got a sorrow in mind. That's the most high God put on them. He said, we're going to have, we gonna have uh, 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 what was the trembling heart? Mm, failing eyes. Trembling heart and failing eyes. Every time I'm legal as can be, I see the police pull up behind me and guess how I feel. I'm heart darn trembling. I mean, I'm just darn legal. I got I always got to snap out of it. You know what I'm saying? They got to start talking. I wish you would pull me over so I can talk some mess to you. I'm legal, boy. What you going to do? Shoot me? You better kill me. Because I'm telling you, if they give me one of them gray, they graze me with something like that, oh, I'm acting a fool on CNN. You know what I'm saying? They going to be, hey, you going to you gonna have to shoot your boy. I'm calling out. Sure, I'm calling all the crooked pack. Go ahead. Let's do it. Let's do it. Call CNN. Let's get me in there. Police shot me. I ain't do nothing. I'm going to make a darn mess of these people. They ain't going to never see it here to end it for me. You better darn kill me. You better shoot and get me good. You know what I'm saying? That thing hit me in the arm or something. I'm, oh, oh, oh. I can't believe it. All I was doing, I mean, he just a racist cop. Black Lives Matter. I mean, I'm acting a darn fool on CNN. As soon as I get enough attention, I'm going to preach the word to these people too. They have to shut off the camera. Shut up. Shut up. You the real Hebrew. I'll tell you on national television, they ain't going to let me on CNN. Don't let me darn get shot. I'll buy a cop. You know what I'm saying? I was watching that Trayvon Martin story. That's a sad, sad story. You know what I'm saying? The one that they got, they got them coming on BET on Mondays. You know what I'm saying? It's a sad story. You look at these people. Stuff about that stuff I ain't never knew. Right? Stuff about that stuff I didn't know. I didn't know it was like other, other police phone calls. You could hear the young man, you know what I'm saying, sitting there screaming out for help. You know what I'm saying? People came outside like, man, somebody just got shot. You know what I'm saying? You could hear the young man screaming out for help. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know. I didn't know they had they had on record. They had on record uh uh what's his name? George Zimmerman. They had on record him making frequent calls about black people being in this neighborhood. And they just picked up all they played all the record. They're like, uh, yeah, um, there's a guy, he looks suspicious in my neighborhood. Uh, is he black, white, Latin? Uh it looks black. They play another one, this, that, another. He looks black. This, that, another, uh, look black. Then they play the one for Trayvon, same thing. Yeah, he looks black. They had targeting black people in the neighborhood. Anytime a black person was walking around there, they didn't like it. All right? They said they made a homeowner's association, made a, uh, a neighborhood watch to keep black people out. And Zimmerman volunteered to be the captain of it. So when you play all them tapes, it kind of put it in perspective. He, time after time, was seeing the Negroes all in the neighborhood. So now it makes sense. On his recording, the one that we all heard for Trayvon Martin, he said, these guys always get away with it. And then shot the man. Now it makes sense. I don't know how he got off. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I do. Because we'll always have a trembling heart. We'll always have a fail in our eyes. Right? Keep going. But the Lord shall give thee a trembling heart and a failing of eyes and sorrow of mind, and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. Your life shall hang in doubt before you. At any moment, your butt can be dead. You know, over half of my life, that's how I felt. Over half of my life, I guess I still feel like that. Over half of my life, I felt like, man, that thing could be over at any moment. Mostly because of the stuff I was doing, the stuff I enjoyed doing, the stuff I was getting into. But at the end of the day, that's how all of us feel. That's why there's no value in our life. We feel like this thing could be gone in any moment. Why do you think you think that's a, all this is a coincidence? It is a coincidence that all this stuff lined up with the, the mindset of a, a black man in general, a black woman in general. I don't know. You decide. He said all these curses are going to stick on you for a sign. Keep going. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, 
and shall have none assurance of thy life. Uh -huh. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God, if it were evening. Mm -hmm. And at the evening thou shalt say, Would God, it were morning. For the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships he by said, the, the way. He said, the Lord going to do what? Shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. Mm -hmm. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. He said, no man shall buy you. And that's what happened to us. In a ship we came to America. A book called it Egypt. That represents bondage for us. Right? He said, y'all wouldn't go into bondage no more. He said, in the way that I told y'all, y'all wouldn't go into bondage no more. You know what I'm saying? That's what y'all going to do. All right? So we are sold in Egypt. We went to Egypt in ships. All right? We came to America and then into, into South America and all the Americas in ships. And we were sold as bondmen. In other words, as slaves. And the book came back and said, and no man shall buy you. And you know what that means when it says no man shall buy you? You redeem. Nobody's going to redeem you. Save you. Give Nobody you. going to be like, you know what? Give you value. Back. You know what? I'm going to buy him off of you, and I'm going to set him free. Yeah, nobody going to do that. That's what redeeming you would be. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to make him a free man. He said, nobody going to do that. Even when we thought we had made free men, we got cheated. Still being cheated and oppressed. All right? Nobody cares. You know what I'm saying? You got some nice black leaders to try to come up and get her. Didn't work out too well. They all get shot in the head for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know how that worked out. Somebody always shoot them in the darn head. Somebody always assassinate them for some reason. Police always end up kicking in their door and then shooting them for some reason. I don't know how that thing worked out for some reason. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you got some strong, even some entertainers. I mean, did some real nice stuff. They always end up in a wheelchair shaking for the rest of their darn life until they die. I don't know how that happened. I really don't know. It's been a whole lot of boxers. Ain't too many people like Muhammad Ali. I mean, he and he took some time off boxing. I mean, he didn't even box as much as some of the other boxers box. You know what I'm saying? He he actually took a. I mean, because he what what happened was he didn't want to go to the draft, so they took away a box. So he took years off of boxing. Then fought a couple more fights after that. Then for some reason, later on in his life, he just started shaking and stuff. You know what I'm saying? He just you know what I'm saying got the shakes. Mm, I don't know how that stuff happened. Apparently, he is associated with uh, I don't know, the uh, Nation of Islam or something like that. I don't know. I don't know how all that stuff happened. Got some strong black leaders. FBI opened up an investigation on him. I don't know why they felt so dangerous to them. All right, a guy named J. Edgar Hoover. You know what I'm saying? Who who ran the FBI? You know what I'm saying? He actually said, "We want to stop anybody from 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 from." portraying or uh, fulfilling the idea of a black messiah, the black savior. But the book tell you, nobody's going to buy you. Nobody's going to redeem you. Nobody can save you. What you going to have a black messiah? How are you going to have a black messiah in the book already told you nobody's going to save you? What do you think? J. Edgar Hoover, y'all ain't going to like it. J. Edgar Hoover doing the Lord's work. He ain't know it. He a sinner. He going to hell. He didn't know what he was doing. He ain't doing the Lord's work. I was like, God, look at it. No, you can't have that. Might mess around and think that's the one. Take his butt out. What you going to do? You know what I'm saying? Get them, ta them tapes on Dr. Martin Luther King. You know what I'm saying? He cheating on his wife. Okay, go ahead and get them tapes. Go ahead and blackmail them with them things. That thing didn't work for King. No, King was like, oh, I'm still going to press for it. That thing ain't work. They tried to blackmail the man. You know what I'm saying? You keep doing what you're doing. We're going to release these tapes to your wife. King was like, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. That thing ain't work for King. Okay, your butt got to get shot. He'd have lit. If he just would have cowered out and just be like, nah, I'm just going to relax. Don't tell my wife. His butt would have been alive. He'd have been all right. You know what King said? Nah, I got a bigger work. I messed up. I got a bigger work that need to be done. Right? Matter of fact, he got worse after that stuff started happening. He started, at first he was talking about, you know, let's just be peaceful, get a white man a chance. You know what I'm saying? After that stuff started happening, he was like, listen, I know I told you I had a dream, but these people, Wretched. You look at some of his last speeches, the tone of them real different. He started sounding like Malcolm X a little bit. You know what I'm saying? He talk, he, he talking about, I'm trying to see how they want us to pull, we, they tell us to pull ourselves up by our bootstrap. They give these people free land, free money, every opportunity.
They get it, but we got to figure this thing out ourselves, and we were slaves, and we built that thing? Oh, he said, I don't think that makes sense. You know what they said? Okay, yeah, we got to go ahead and shoot him. We're trying, they are trying not to shoot the man. Okay, just go ahead and shoot him. Yeah, no, nah, right there. Blowing brains out. What the rest of the people going to do? They going to look at that and take a step back. That's why you see people like Jesse Jackson. You see, he, you know, he right there with him, fighting a good fight, right? The quote-unquote good fight right there with him. You see, he changed his course of action, went into politics. He's still effective, still made some moves, still changed some stuff. You know what I'm saying? He did some, he did some positive stuff for the people, right? But you see, he took a, a, less, a less direct path. You know what I'm saying? Let me play the game that they play. You know what I'm saying? Let me try to do this thing a different way. And then, you know, after a while, of course, you get corrupted playing that type of game. Right? Same thing with, uh, uh, what's his name, Cummings? He's still, a, he's still like a senator or Congress, I think a congressman. You know what I'm saying? He said, Cummings, he's down with Martin Luther King, too. You know what I'm saying? Same thing. He went into politics, tried to, you know, change. Let me change it by playing the game they play. Mm -hmm. Now your butt end up corrupted. Now they got you as a front man talking about Trump this and Trump that, knowing that Trump ain't never did nothing to you. Your district in Atlanta looked terrible. That's your district. Trump ain't, Trump ain't do that. You've been, you been over that district for 10 years. Trump ain't do that. And your district look terrible. Why is that? These white folks don't care nothing about you. They let you have your spotlight every now and again, let you keep getting reelected, and they don't give you nothing to take care of your people. And you stop caring. You stop caring. Because you start playing their game now. Now it's about just keeping, saving faith, keeping your money. Right? Keep your deals going. And it all happened for one reason. Because nobody going to buy you. Nobody going to redeem you. Nobody going to save you. Right? I would love it to be so. Can't go against the book, though. That thing can't happen. Same thing going to happen with these Hebrew Israelites that call themselves trying to rise up and do some extra stuff. That's cool. And I'm not saying this to say, don't try to rise up. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just trying to let you know. Just know what you're getting into. You preparing yourself to get shot, get corrupted, get these people to lie. They're going to they gonna pull tapes on you. You know what I'm saying? Technology way different. They got, they can make, they, they, they tell you, they make fake videos now. Right? They got the technology now. You can just put people in video. They're not even there. And that thing look legit. They got fake video. Oh, they're going to have all types of stuff for y'all now. Please. Y'all try. Let somebody, let somebody break through this barrier. Right now, they got it sold up anyway. They got it to where you do something, we'll ignore you, not give you any media attention. Or if we do give you media attention, we're going to shape the, all the media to do something and say something against you to make the whole world believe something negative against you. Or we're going to highlight something that's real negative against some Any mistake you made, we going to highlight that little mistake. That's what they did to Trayvon Martin. They been, all these black kids that got shot, that's exactly what they did. Trayvon Martin, he smoked weed. He was a gangster. This, that, and the other. Showed pictures of him holding the mid middle finger up. They've got that image of you. Now, that's what the people think. Of course you shoot him. He's a thug. Right? You notice the pictures they show these little black kids that they get shot. It's always some like you some grueling picture. They don't pick no good picture. All these pictures on Facebook, they don't pick none of the fly pictures of the kid. They pick they pick the grueling because the the media now they smarter than they was back in the seventies and the sixties and the fifties. They smarter than that. They ain't falling for that junk no more. They used to let us have our own radio stations and talk and all that stuff. They used to cover us protesting. Oh no, we not playing that game. You know when they cover us protesting now, even the white folks. It's not just black either. They learn from everybody. They learn. They learn from our experience. They did. You remember they were doing that Occupy Wall Street stuff? You know what I'm saying? Remember years ago they were doing that thing? It was for the longest. That thing didn't get no coverage until they could co-opt it. They didn't start covering it until they got their own people in there to control it. When their politicians start getting in there and start, start talking and doing all that stuff, that's when you saw coverage. They were doing that thing for about two months before any media coverage. They smart now. They're like, man, we ain't covering this crap. What's wrong with y'all? They mess around and lose control because they saw they lost control with us. Black Panthers kicked down the door, walked in with all them guns. Everybody was shot. All them cameras got on them. And these black folk can talk their butt off. They got in front of them cameras yelling, no, we do not agree. If you think that we gonna come, no, we the clear speaking and they're articulate and they knew what they were talking about and they were using your law against you, it is our constitutional right to have a gun. They talking to you clear, yelling at you? And that thing makes sense? Oh, they took over America with that. Even these white folks are sitting there saying, you know what? We joined the Black Panther. How do you think America feel about that? That's a spit in their darn face. You're going to join these, these darn slaves that we brought? 
You done lost your darn it's our kids. You done lost your darn mind. They ain't having that stuff. They said, no, never again. So they start slowly getting it together. This whole media control. Look how fast. Look how fast they got everybody hating Trump. <laughs> Easy money. Easy money. They ain't got to do nothing. They got the whole world thinking. These, these, these idiots. They got a thing. Let me stop calling people idiots. The most I got, he said, he even call a man dumb. All right? He said, you even call a man dumb. He said, rocker. He said, you and you, and, you, you know what I'm saying? You said, you in uh, danger of the judgment seat. You know what I'm saying? But these foolish people, we sit here and we look at this stuff. And they tell us that Russia interfered in our, re our election and colluded with Trump. First of all, that's not even a crime. Right? But they got us thinking that, like, something, you know what I'm saying, is criminal going on, right? Because it is icky, you know what I'm saying? It would be icky if something like that happened. But they got us believing that Russia changed some results in our election somehow. So then if you drill down to it, like, on the survey, it's like, yeah, that probably did happen. But if you drill down to it, exactly how did that happen? You know what they're going to tell you? Well, there were some Russians that bought Facebook ads. So you mean to tell me it's that easy? To corrupt an election in America, you buy a couple Facebook ads. You know how much money they spent on the ads, according to them? About $100,000, $150,000. So you throw $100,000, $150,000 in Trump's direction on Facebook ads, and that wins him the election. That's what these people are trying to say. That's like $5 for Trump. Let you, I mean, let's just do some numbers. How much money did Obama spend in his election? I think he spent close to a billion dollars. I think he spent close to a billion dollars in his election. And you mean to tell me a hundred thousand dollars changed the election for Trump? If you look at the last one where Hillary and uh, Trump were going, hundreds of millions of dollars that they spent. And you mean to tell me a hundred thousand dollars swayed the election one direction? Stop that lying. Just stop the lying. All these people just tell these lies and they keep repeating it. And nobody stops and say, okay. Give me the details. Right? And they never have to talk about it. You turn on that TV right now, guarantee they're going to be talking about Trump. Guarantee. Because they got the media where they have to talk about him all day long. And the reason why they have it like that because they set up an infrastructure that they will control what people think. If we wanted this, we'll all come together. We'll all say it, say it the same way. When they wanted Obama in, you turn on the TV, it's the exact opposite. Everybody was talking good about Obama. You didn't have no station, you had Fox, right? You always have Fox. Fox is going to be the only one that kind of do something different, right? Right now, Fox will be talking good about Trump. All the other stations are going to be talking negative about him. When Obama was in, Fox was talking bad about Obama. All the other stations talking positive about him. And that's just how you're going to have it because they have it set up that way. So what do you think is going to happen when the kid gets shot? Black kid. And the cops say, I was in fear for my life. You're going to have all the news stations sitting there and none of them going to bring up the points. Even the ones that seem like they democratic and on the black people's side, they're going to be talking about the same. Well, you never know. I mean, you just don't know. You just don't know. Then you got one like Fox saying, no, clearly he was a criminal. Right? Then you got the other ones just, well, you just never know. I mean, uh, you never know. But nobody going to save us. Nobody going to come to our defense. And they're going to tear down in unison, all of them going to tear down anybody who try to come to our defense. All right, we got to smarten up. We got to know the know know the know the field that we own. You know what I'm saying? Know how know how to deal with these people. Know what we up against. You know what I'm saying? It's all right to put yourself out there. You know what I'm saying? You want to put yourself out there. You want to talk and you want to you want to kind of inspire the people to do more and be more. You want to lead us and you want to you want to drive us and and kind of get us in a place where we have better for ourselves. You want to talk to these politicians, try to get more out of them. I get it. And I'm not trying to tell you not to do it. I'm just trying to tell you, just know, you liable to get yourself a darn shot. Or they're going to come up with some video of you doing something crazy. They're going to find some, some little kid porn on your, on your, on your computer somehow. You're going to be looking like, I've never looked at that video. I ain't never seen no stuff like that. I ain't never did that. It's on your computer. They can plan all that stuff. All that stuff is way too easy now. Way too technology. The way technology is way too easy. Way too easy. You know what I'm saying? Easy money. You know what I'm saying? All they gotta do is plant that stuff, and then nobody gonna believe it. By the time they find out it was planted, that thing gonna be ten years down the line, and everybody. You know how hard it is to 
to, to, to change the people's mind after they believe something for a certain period of time and they've seen it all over TV. They still got to believe in that Michael Jordan had a, uh, he, he owned a, a, a black, our own prisons. They still got to believe in that based off of one fake up. They still got to believe in Tommy Hill figure was racist. <laughs> they still got to believe in, what's another one? One of them old little things that we used to all believe. Uh, KKK by Timbaland. Timbaland's owned by KKK or something weird like that? Timbaland's owned. I ain't never heard that one. But all that type of stuff. They still got to believe in this foolish stuff. And you know how long it takes for us to change our mind about it? It's a long time. I ain't wearing no Tommy here. That's crazy. That's crazy. I ain't wearing no darn Tommy here. It's a long time. Long time I wouldn't wear no darn Tommy Hill figure. And I knew it, though. And that's the crazy. I knew. I like, mm, I heard that story was fake. And I feel like every time I look at some Tommy, mm, no, I'm not getting them, though. They ain't nice. I mean, I ain't getting them. You know what I'm saying? I ain't break myself in that thing until like last year. Other than, you know what I'm saying? Maybe a year or two ago, and I bought I bought some Tommy Hill figure shoes. I'm like, man, that's stupid. I'm about to put these shoes on. Things is nice. You know what I'm saying? What I'm not gonna put them on for? But they, it takes a long time, and once it gets in your psyche, you just got that in your blood now. Just like, oh, I'm not feeling that. Right? It's iffy. You never really know. And that's how they get it. Just put a little doubt in the people's mind. Never really know. The whole book is talking about us. Right? The whole book is talking about us. It's just time for us to be able to realize this is what we up against. We're not fighting against the people. We fighting against we fighting against the law. We fighting against curses. We fighting against stuff that the most high God put on us before we even got here. Right? Once you can understand that, then you now you have a solution. Teach the people who they are. Teach the people who they are. Right? You want these people. You want these people to sound wild and now you don't want them to steal your little white lady purse and all that stuff. I get it. I understand. Teach the people who they are. Y'all going about it all wrong. Let me, listen, let me talk to the people. I help y'all out. Let me teach them who they are. I guarantee it'll work out for you. Some ways at least. Right? You don't want the people to rebel against you. You don't want the people, okay, teach them who they are. You know how these people wild out in these neighborhoods, they shooting each other, and sometimes they end up shooting and leading your kids to go shoot people and all that stuff and want to be gangsters. You know why that's happening? Because they don't know who they are. Teach them who they are. Just teach them. You the Hebrews. This is your history. This is how your people, your, your people was a decent people. Right? You know what I'm saying? You don't want your white sons chasing after these black girls. I get it. I understand. Teach the people who they are. We'll fix all this stuff. Now, by doing that, you're going to have a well-versed people, and they're going to deal with your butt. You know what I'm saying? But they're going to deal with you intelligently. They're going to deal with you with honor. They're going to deal with you in justice. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't like that, though. All right? They don't want to They don't want to be dealt with like that. You know what they want to be dealt with? Well, they got the upper hand. Well, they the smart ones. They can out-talk us. All right? They can manipulate us. It's enjoyable to be in the, in the lead. It's enjoyable to be, you know what I'm saying, in control. Just teach the people who they are. Let me teach them. You know what I'm saying? Let the men of God that's out here that know the truth teach them. There's a few of us out there. You know what I'm saying? I see my brothers on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? Preaching the truth. I appreciate it too. You know what I'm saying? Keep teaching these people the truth. Eventually, this thing going to be wide open. People are just going to start making decisions after that. Do you want to serve God or not? And it's not all about just being a Hebrew. Right? That's just one piece. Right? That's just something that, that kind of give legitimacy to, to, to who we are, then also then give legitimacy to who we should follow. Right? But if you don't take it to that next thing, you just say, I'm a Hebrew, and then you stop right there, your butt just as good as a Gentile, then what's the point? Your butt going to be cut off just like everybody else. You don't obey this word. Teach people who they are. They obey. Right? Let's grab, uh, grab uh, Solomon. Songs of Solomon. Give me Songs of Solomon verse... Uh, Chapter 1, verse 1. It's Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1. Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Mm -hmm. 
Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine. Uh -huh. Because of the savor of thy good ointments, thy name is an ointment poured forth. Therefore uh -huh. do the virgins love thee. Uh -huh. Draw me, we will run after thee. The king has brought me into his chambers. Uh -huh. We will be glad and rejoice in thee. We will remember thy love more than wine. Uh -huh. The upright love thee. The upright love thee. Watch this. I am black. Oh, my goodness. But comely. She said, I am black, but I'm beautiful. What up? O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. All you daughters of what? Jerusalem. What you mean? The book been trying to tell y'all we black. Don't try to act like, I tell y'all, you know what I'm saying, we look at this book and we read Deuteronomy 28 and I'm telling y'all the curses of, then you know the next question people got, well, wouldn't the Bible say you a black if it, I mean, if the, if the Hebrews were black, wouldn't it say? Yeah, it would. They just ain't never read it to you. They just ain't never read it to us. Right? Give me uh, Lamentations. Four or five. Four. The Lamentations four, I think, uh, give me verse six. And they ain't gonna read you the parts of the Bible that tell you flat out I'm black. When Moses, when Moses was doing his miracle, he stuck his hand inside of his bosom, and what happened? He turned white. How you gonna be white? You stick your hand in your bosom, you turn white. <laughs> that thing said white as le it said it said he turned leprous as snow. What type of miracle is that? Oh, let me show you something. I'm gonna stick my hand. It's white. I'm gonna stick my hand in my bosom. I'm gonna pull it out. Guess what it's gonna be? White still. That don't make no sense. He was a Hebrew. He stuck that black hand in there. He pulled that thing out. And people said, whoa, what in the world? How your hand turned white? Look at that thing. That's something to see. And what happened after that? People was like, okay. You know what I'm saying? Take it to the promised land then. That's something amazing. Stick my hand in there and turn white. Now I'm already white. They don't look at me like, boy, you didn't do nothing. Get on my darn face. This Lamentation uh, chapter 4. What is that? Verse what? 6? All right, give me six. We'll read down to it. For the punishment of the iniquity of the day of the daughter of my people is greater than the punishment of the sin of Sodom. Uh huh. That was overthrown in a moment, and mm -hmm. no hand stayed on her. Mm -hmm. Watch her, it. Her Nazarites were purer than snow; they were whiter than milk; they were more ruddy in body than rubies. Uh huh. They're so polishing. now, so now, people, what they look at, they like uh, Nazarites were purer than snow, and then what? More, what than milk? Whiter than milk. Right? And then what else after that? They were more ruddy in body than rubies. So now, one thing is talking about purity. And purity, they're saying she was white. I mean, the Nazarites were white. Right. They're not talking about skin color or appearance. They're just talking about purity. Clean. Yeah, cleanness. Right? Then right after that, when they say in what? In body? Ruddier, they were ruddy in body than rubies. Now it's talking about skin. Right? Ruddy is talking about red bone. Right? Why would you call somebody white and then ruddy at the next time? You know what I'm saying? You white and then you a red bone. No. At the very least, that's saying you light skin. Right? Watch this. What happened next? Their polishing was of sapphire. Uh-huh. Their visage is blacker than coal. They're than a coal. what now? Their visage is blacker than a coal. They are not known in the streets. Their skin cleaves to their bones. It is withered. It has become like a stick. So now, you look at it, they were saying, these people, they used to be light-skinned. I mean, they were nice, radiant skin. When they, say, when they say ruddy, like a ruby, they had nice, radiant, bright skin. Right? And now you can see their visage, their skin, right? Their skin now, their appearance now. Is black. And they skin stick to their bones. You know what happened to us? You know what I'm saying? You can take like a kind of a fair skinned black person and you starve them, don't feed them darn nothing. His skin gonna start sticking to his bone and his skin gonna turn black. You can see it in Africa right now when my they go mom, through famine. My mom's hands got like that when she had cancer. The skin turned black. You ain't that dark. You know what I'm saying? You ain't even that dark. But let you not eat, let your, your skin start sticking to your bones. Just turned black. All right? You know what's interesting? 
these uh these Jewish people, they starved. When Hitler, you know what I'm saying, Hitler put them, you know what I'm saying, put them in these camps, he started it, but guess what happened to their skin? It stuck to their bones. Guess what color they turned? White. Extremely pale. We saw it in high school. We had shown us that video in mm-hmm. high school. Mr. Smith. Extremely pale. Why they intern black? I guess limitation don't apply to them, huh? I know who it do apply to. They just not gonna read you these parts of the book. It's there. You can, we can keep going. We can go all through this book. Our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. You can just keep going. I mean, you had all this stuff. We can go all through this book and it'll give you, it'll tell you. It'll tell you how we look like the Egyptians. You look at history, what the Egyptians look like, black. Not light skin. Don't look like Arabians like they try to say they look like now. They were black. You can see, you can see old little, little pictures of them, the statues and all this stuff. They were black. Africans, 100%. All right? Yeah, even in history, you, gotta, you got historians that compared us to people. Historians are like, I don't know. I don't know if they Ethiopians or if they're Egyptians. Ethiopians, black. The name Ethiopian means black. Don't, uh, don't uh, Egypt mean black? Like Kemet? Kemet, mm-hmm. Kemet yeah, land of black. You know what I'm saying? They try to tell a lie and say, no, I was talking about the soil. Stop that lying. You stop all that lying. I ain't talking about no darn soil. And say land of black. Say uh, land of these black folks. No ham mean burnt. Ham mean burnt. Burnt. Black. You look at all this stuff in the book. They try to tell you exactly where we at. And that's the folks that we got mixed in with. They didn't say we was ham, but we sure got mixed in with ham. The Canaanites was hamites. We got mixed right on in with the Canaanites. Egyptians were Hamites. And the Canaanites looked at the Egyptians was like, I mean, they looked at the Hebrews and they were like, look at those Egyptians crying. We always got confused with the Egyptians. Still to this day. Yeah. We still got people running around talking about they Egyptian now. All right? We go over all this just to say, don't let these people lie to you about what's in the book. All right? We're, 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 next week we're going to... Uh, we're going to uh, start at uh, Deuteronomy 29, and we're going to try to shoot through the rest of Deuteronomy. And we're going to start off with Joshua. You know what I'm saying? Then we'll start pulling up the maps and kind of going through, you know what I'm saying, going through and trying to figure out where, you know what I'm saying, where, how everything play out and, you know what I'm saying, the, the route that we took to kind of uh, kind of take back, uh, or take, not take back, but take Canaan from um, the Canaanites because the Most High God gave it to us in our hand. Then we'll kind of go through Judges, you know what I'm saying? But that'll be a little more in the future. So we'll, we'll take our time through Joshua, and we'll just slowly go through all the history until we can figure this thing out, all right? Until it become a clear picture to us, all our history, and then we have a foundation. That's all we need. We just got a foundation. We got to be able to look at it and say, this is what all the people went through, all right? And then that, that type of stuff has to inspire us, right? We got to kind of look at it and be like, okay, I've seen the people where they went wrong at. We're not going to make that mistake. We see how they. We see how God operate. We see how God respond to this type of sin and that type of sin. So we not gonna act like that. We not gonna. We gonna respond differently. We gonna do something different. And once you know your history, then you could do something. We just don't know. We don't know our history. You know what I'm saying? We feel like we ain't got no history, and we don't feel connected to the history that we do have because these people that gave us pictures and, and, and they gave us European voices of, of people. You know what I'm saying? Even when you listen to the Bible on your phone, you got this British man reading it to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I'm You hear swords in the background in your mind. You know what you see? You see a man with a darn, with a darn nickel plated. You know what I'm saying? Nickel plated uh, uh, armor on. You know what I'm saying? With a little kilt dress. You know what I'm saying? And swinging his sword back and forth, trying to say, "Yeah, that's the Hebrew." That ain't darn us, man. That's these other people. But that's what they put in our mind for so long. You know what I'm saying? That's what we see. You know what I'm saying? When you see Father Abraham, you see this gray bearded man, and he white. You know what I'm saying? He just, you know what I'm saying, got this big old dress on. Like, no, that ain't our people. That's not us. That's not us. We as Hebrews. But we don't have anybody to put that type of imagery in our minds. And we really shouldn't even need that imagery. Right? We shouldn't need it, but these people didn't tainted us so much that we feel like we do need that, that correction of imagery. So I'm tired of seeing that in my head. It took me a long time to stop seeing Jesus as white. You know what I'm saying? I used to always see the pickle man, you know what I'm saying, hanging up on the, hanging up on the stick. Always you see him. You know what I'm saying? 
Now it's getting to the point I don't see nothing. That's how I like it. I don't want to see nothing. I don't want to see nothing. I know he is a Hebrew, though. Got to be a Hebrew. I ain't not going to be a Hebrew. The ones that really know about history are like, that, like put two or two together. They know he was black. Yeah, they a lot of people, a lot of people higher up, though. You know what I'm saying? It just ain't important to them to talk about. That's all right. It got to be important for us. We'll make them talk about it. You know what I'm saying? This type of stuff, when they get out, you get to a certain level. Everybody get quiet. I don't want to talk about it. You know who they're going to let speak? The ignorant folks. People who don't know. And they'll just let it go down. They'll let it play out. And they'll hope that they never got to address it. You know what I'm saying? They sit there and let you argue amongst yourself. I know he don't know what he's talking about. And I know that black man is right about everything he's talking about. But hopefully the black man gets so frustrated at hearing this person who don't know, he'll just stop. That way I never got to address it. I ain't never got to admit it. I ain't never got to give an opinion on it. And that's where they at right now. That's why you're going to see a lot of people just quiet about it. it. Ain't that they don't know. You know what I'm saying? It ain't that they it's just, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to get involved. I don't want to throw my hat in the ring like that. Now I got to let you know that I know who you are. Or I got to lie that I know who you are, even though I know you, I know who you are. They're like, I don't want to do what you want. I'll just shut up. I'll let you, I'll let y'all argue. You know what I'm saying? But eventually it's going to get to a point where it's going to get brought to the right person. And they got to, they got to put something, they got to put an opinion out there. No, I know you're the Hebrew, or mm, no, nah, I don't think you're the Hebrew. Either way, they're going to have to put some opinion out there, but the, truthfully, they're going to know. And once they put that opinion out there, then they got to prove it. And that's when the conversations get real. It's coming. It's coming real soon. You know what I'm saying? That thing got to come real soon. A lot of stuff going to change. So we just got to be prepared for when the change goes. We can roll with it, and we can lead our people up out of here, wherever the Most High God try to take us to. Then the Messiah come back eventually. Any questions? Let's go ahead and pray out.